If Messi and Ronaldo are in the same football team, in any football team, chances are they're going to win. Who do you think's the best of all time of the pair? You're trying to get this out of me, <laughs> are you? I like, I like you, you're trying, aren't you? You're trying. Hi, I'm Gary Cahill and this is my Fives on Sport Bible. Right, okay. Um, so I'll go for the goalkeeper as Peter Cech for me. Courtois was up there, but I think when I first got to the club, Peter Cech was there. Had some good memories, fantastic goalkeeper. I think with Pete, he was a um, really good talker, really good organiser, um, good with his feet, good distribution. I think for me, he was like an all-round goalkeeper. But like I say, Courtois was kind of the next in line and equally as good, so it was a tough one. But I think between the both, we had uh, one and two at the time, which was probably one of the best in the league, I think. I'll probably go with... I mean, Aspilicueta is a no-brainer, but I think I will put in David Luiz for a number of reasons. For the fact that he is probably one of the best on-the-ball centre-backs that I've played with. He can pick a pass from anywhere. His ability to step out with the ball and his character. He was always a big joker, so I think in a five-a-side team, it'd be good to have a character in there, uh, and he's certainly that. Do you think he was underrated? I think when you say underrated, just look at his career and what he's done in his career. I don't see how he can be underrated. I think sometimes people have opinions on, obviously at the time he was kind of quite a flair player for a centre back, sometimes took chances, sometimes got away with it, sometimes didn't. But nevertheless, he was his own personality and he was a massive player. And like I say, when you look at his career, for um, his caps for Brazil, the trophies won, obviously great memories for me of the Champions League final playing with him. Um, I think his career speaks for itself. So. Eden Hazard. Eden Hazard was unplayable at times when I was at Chelsea. He was, he was unbelievable. So, for me, one of the best players, or the best player for natural ability that I've played with. How was he on the training pitch? Ed? Very casual. Yeah. He was really relaxed personality-wise, very, very relaxed. Um, didn't take anything too seriously. He never felt like the pressure got to him, ever. He reminded me of a player that just would go out and play with his mates in the park, if you know what I mean. That kind of play, he wouldn't overthink the matches, he'd just get there, be so relaxed, and then he'd go out and just his natural ability would take care of itself. And a lot of the time, um, especially in the, the successful seasons that we had with him, we'd look for him to change the game for us. You know, it's kind of that player where he's a sticky match and you kind of want him to get on the ball, so you know he's going to change the game. So, big players change games, and he's definitely one of them big players. Fabregas, almost like a quarterback. He used to sit in front of the back four for us when we played at Chelsea. He used to give him the ball and he'd just find passes. Very, very clever player. A player that people said didn't have a huge amount of pace. He never needed it. He was so clever. He bought himself time on the ball. Um, the game looked very easy for him. Very, very good player. Big personality as well. Big personality in the dressing room, um, which you always need in successful teams. Didier Drogba. Um, for a, obviously a, a legend at, at Chelsea, scored so many big goals, won trophies, was just a big personality, scored goals that he should never score, um, very good. I mean I had a great time with Diego Costa as well, I thought he was brilliant for us, but Didier, when you think of Chelsea or when I first went to Chelsea, you think of the likes of Czech, Terry Lampard, I see Cole Drogba, and these were the kind of iconic players that was there at the time and uh, yeah, he was, a, he was a massive player. That Champions League final, when it's him stepping up to take that penalty, did you have any doubt at all? <clears throat> um, no, I didn't have a doubt because he, if you look over his career, the amount of big goals he scored in big games, he was almost he was like a big game player when he come to life in the big games and scored many important goals for us. So uh, no, and I was very hopeful as well because I was even next to the one after, so I was really <laughs> hopeful that he scored. So yeah, I was buzzing. Go for Edison at Man City. I think he one is a top a top goal a goalkeeper in terms of shot stopping, but he's one of the best goalies that I've seen or played against with his feet. I think he's almost like he's almost like a midfielder in goal. His passing range is frightening. His distribution is frightening. It's tough because he started off a lot of attacks for them, and it's, it sounds crazy. But when you work on 
facing them, even you know, when I was at Chelsea or other teams, you work on facing them, you work on how you're going to press them. And it's very difficult to press when he can pick, obviously, your easy passes here, he can pick the fullback out here, he can pick the fullback out here. He's got a ridiculously long kick, as everyone knows. So you can't even, as a back four, squeeze up to the back to, to here because he'll just, the forward will be there and he'll just reach him. So there's so many things to think about, even from the goalkeeper, do you know what I mean? So hence why, obviously, Man City are as good as they are. He's, he's, he's one of the, uh, the, the reasons for that and the way that he starts the attacks off for them all the time. So Van Dijk for me, again, massive play. He was uh, early on in his career, I remember playing, he was at Southampton, almost learning his way there. Got his move to Liverpool and uh, yeah, the rest speaks for itself. He's obviously one of the best centre-backs in the world, I think. And uh, seems a big character. Um, quick, strong, aggressive, can play. Again, all the attributes that you need to be a, a top player in, in European football, not the Premier League. So I'll go Messi, put him in the midfield, played in the Champions League against him. When we was actually successful in 2012, which obviously the second leg was a crazy game, but played against him then, um, and yeah, just phenomenal. I don't think he even needs a description on how he plays, <laughs> he just does look at the name and that's it, his numbers, the way that, the, uh, the amount of goals he scored and everything is just frightening. They just Himself and Ronaldo, I think for me, just play on a different planet. So yeah, I'll say him. How, how did you think you got on against him? I'd like to say we did alright because it was, uh, I think the first leg was 1-0 and we managed to keep him quiet somehow and then again the second leg there was so much drama involved in that. It was just our year but um, no we did, we did okay. Glad I'd have to play against him every week. <laughs> I'll go for Paul Scholes. I remember playing in my first, I was obviously my first club was Aston Villa, I got in the first team there. I only played 20 odd games, but one of them games before I left was against Man United and he scored, a, I don't know if you remember, but it was a, a screamer from outside the box, I think it was like a volley. Mm. Um, that was my first memories of him, bar watching him before that, obviously when I was coming through the youth system. But one of the best midfielders England's had, um, the amount of titles and trophies won at Man U was incredible, and like I said, yeah. Everyone knows Paul Scholes is, 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 is unbelievable. So I go Ronaldo, just for what I said, with Messi and Ronaldo, I think these guys, the numbers that they produce is just mind blowing really. The amount of games they play, the amount of goals they've scored, again, the amount of titles they've won. Um, speak for yourself, two of the best players in, in world football. Who did you find harder to come up against between Ronaldo and Messi? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Very different players. Again, Ronaldo had more of a, he had more of a presence in the box. He could score goals with his head, obviously outside. Both of them, both of them on the pitch had that kind of aura about him, that kind of respect, where people would come and shut him down and almost stop two yards away from him, probably because they didn't want to be look, uh, made to look stupid. Um, so they almost commanded that respect from from the players, people was kind of a bit nervy around them because of what they can do to you. So two, two big presents on a football pitch, um, so I can't choose between them. Who do you think's the best of all time of the pair? You're trying to get this out of me, <laughs> are you? I like, I like you, you're trying, aren't you? you're trying. Uh, I, can't, I can't choose, I can't choose. It does, the numbers are just, are just incredible and obviously very similar, so it's very difficult to choose, I think. Who wins that match for either side? I think... Uh, going against my teammates here, but you, you can't, if Messi and Ronaldo are in the same football team, in any football team, chances are they're going to win. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go with these guys. And which team would you rather play for? <clears throat> um, I'd rather play, yeah, I've got to stick by my, uh, stick by <laughs> my boys, uh, I'd rather play in this team. Anyone that you particularly had like really tough days against? You check. No. <laughs> Joe Hart. No. Van der Sar. Van der Sar. Always scored against him. <laughs>